Hey guys, so for today's video I am going to be taking a look at Fedora 26. Now there's been a lot of discussion about this particular distribution because to be honest Fedora have a good history of putting out really good distributions and this is no exception. I've put this on my laptop which is a Triton from Entroware. It's the, uh, the entry level laptop and uh, I've been having a great time with it so I've decided to use the LXQT build which um, it's an interesting build because I think it's the first time they've actually put out LXQT as a as a, a full Fedora spin, but it works really really well. So as you can see, I've got it laid out here, and what is particularly interesting, what you may notice from sort of initial first impressions of using the system, is that it actually looks really nice. Uh, the toolkit that you can see or is uh, is QT5. And that's the Breeze theme, which I believe is the default theme for Fedora. Um, and they've put, I believe, this is a special theme uh, for Openbox for it. And it looks the part. It looks like a really nice QT-based desktop environment. It's really, really lightweight. I've not had a single issue in terms of performance. I've not even had the fan spinning up hardly at all, even when doing some, you know, like some pretty processor-intensive tasks. All in all, I've got to say, I've got pretty much nothing but good things to say about this distribution, and I've been using it now pretty much since the day that it, it came out, so a couple, maybe a couple of weeks, I think? A week at the very least. And um, the, the thing that i, I got to say that, cat, that, that you notice the most is the performance. It's a great modern distribution with the hardware support and all that kind of stuff, with the added benefit of just a super lightweight desktop that works really, really well. And I don't even feel for the most part that you're you're compromising on it, compromising on UI or compromising on usability or anything like that. Um, because it's just so simple and easy to use. Like you just go to the logo in the bottom left hand corner of the screen, you know, internet, and then you choose your, your browser and whatnot. So it comes, interestingly enough, it comes with the Cupzilla browser by default, as did the um, Lubuntu. Uh, Lubuntu Next, which is quite interesting. So it does seem like Cupzilla is the desktop uh, browser of choice for this particular desktop environment. I ended up having to install Firefox, Chrome, and Chromium, interestingly enough. So the thing about Fedora and Red Hat, and this will always be something that I uh, that you'll need to be sort of aware of uh, and uh, need to be conscious of, is that they have a very strict adherence to the free software philosophy. Now, to some people that's a selling point, but to other people that means a little extra work in setting up your distribution. And it did require just a touch little work to actually set up this uh, laptop so that I could use it on a day-to-day -day basis. I needed to use a third-party repository called RPM Fusion. So that's RPM Fusion. Um, it's a very well-known third-party repository. It's the one that pretty much everyone goes out and, and uses that needs non-free software or codecs or what have you. Um, and f it's... It does the job. It does the job well, and I haven't had any real problems with it. The only issue that I kind of had with it was um, streaming things like Twitch and uh, YouTube live streaming from Chromium. So I'd you know, I'd download all the necessary codecs to run live streaming stuff, and uh, it would work on Chrome, it would work on Firefox, but it wouldn't work on Chromium and Cupzilla. And these are the kind of problems that I'm kind of a little bit used to when it comes to Fedora, because they're the kind of problems that are, are getting free software to interact with non-free software. And because Fedora has such a strict adherence to free software principles, sometimes you will have issues when free software and non-free software mix, and this is most common with things like codecs and whatnot. So I've had some minor issues when it comes to non-free software. To be honest, if you're if you are looking for an up-to-date distribution that uh, you know that has all the latest and greatest software, six monthly release cycle that um, has a strict adherence to free software principles, this is the distribution for you. It's got a pretty decent software selection as well. Uh, I record these videos using Simple Screen Recorder, and for a long time that was my my gold standard as to whether or not a distribution had a decent software repository. It's a slightly out of the way piece of software, but people that make videos, you know, they they know about it and they um, they use it quite a lot. So the ability to sort of install that that um, that's definitely. Um, that's definitely a good sign that it's got a decent set of software in the old repositories. And um, to be honest, RPM Fusion as well. RPM Fusion has a lot of good software in the repositories. I think that's where I actually downloaded Chrome from. So 
Google Chrome is I like the obviously it's Google's browser, but it bundles in all the codecs within the browser itself, like a sort of a self-contained um, you know browser codec model. And the reason for that is so that you can just download Google Chrome and it will have everything that you need to to, to browse the internet, live stream, all that kind of stuff. So if I do install something like Fedora onto you know like a friend or family member's computer, um, it's probably worth installing Google Chrome as well just to make sure that they've got all of the internet functionality. Um, if that's something that you so wish. Okay, so one thing that you may notice is that Qt4 apps do not look particularly good on LXQT because it uses the Qt5 toolkit. So, um, and I think that's the case, isn't it? So this is Qt5, it uses, yeah, Qt4.8.7. So this is an example of a Qt4 application and it looks like basically one of those GTK1 applications where the uh, theme hasn't sort of loaded in. Uh, it looks pretty darn ugly, it looks pretty darn dated, but if you're only using one or two Qt4 applications, like for example I've got KeyPass X here, um, which doesn't necessarily, you know, I'm not staring at it all day long, it's hardly going to be um, like, you know, any kind of flagship application for this distribution or anything like that, so it really doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, like be aware if, if, if you run a lot of Qt4 applications, you may want to be aware that the, it may require some setting up to get them to look great in LXQt. But I think really it's it's probably only um, KeyPass X that runs on Qt4 at this stage now. So um, the configure you can configure a lot. Um, on this desktop environment as well. I won't go too much into the control panel here. It uses Openbox as the window manager, so it's got a nice, like, properly developed window manager running the show, which is always uh, reassuring because a lot of the time, new window managers uh, they can be pretty flaky. But Openbox is the window manager here. Um, you do have a set of themes and whatnot. Um, Fedora do bring their own theme, so you're using Breeze, and I think that's the default theme, and it gives you a set of icon themes. Uh, it gives you L some LXQT themes. These generally look pretty nice, but they're either blue or orange. Um, but it's, it's really only theming the menu at the bottom of the screen there. You can do fonts, cursors, that kind of thing. It gives you a few to s select from, but if you're really looking at um, customizing the distribution, you, you, you're going to need to go out on your own on this one. But to be honest, the default looks really nice, I think, especially for such a lightweight distribution. Yeah, it might not match up to a, a KDE or a Plasma or... Or, or cinnamon or gnome or anything like that, but it's not bad. At least that's uh, that's my takeaway from it. Um, I ha I am a big fan of tap to click on touchpads on laptops, and I did need to go into a configuration file to change that. Now it was just as simple as a Google search. The Google search directed me to the right file to edit, and then I just needed to edit a slight configuration file. But there isn't going to be GUI access for everything. So you may, in the setup process, need to adjust the occasional config file because that's LXQT and it is a lightweight distribution and that's part of the trade-off. But for the most part, piece of cake. Piece of cake setting this up. So it comes with LibreOffice. So this is an example of, I think it's a GTK3 app now. Um, and this is an example of what a GTK3 app might look on LXQT. So it comes with the standard add way to theme, I, th I would guess. And... It just gives you this. It looks fine. It, it you know it looks fine if you're um, just doing word processing and all that kind of stuff. The theme's loaded in, so that's all good. But I'm interested that they 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 chose LibreOffice because personally, uh, Caligra Words and the Caligra Office Suite for Qt based environments is pretty is, is significantly better. Now, for the most part, when it comes to word processing and spreadsheets and stuff, most people only sort of require the basic functions. So if you, you know, so so what comes default with a distribution is, you know, largely up for debate. Like, do you need an advanced spreadsheet um, piece of software or, or, or is just something to do your, your annual accounts enough? Um, but so I don't know how complex Caligra is in terms of word processing, in terms of uh, spreadsheets, but it's certainly good enough for me. And 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 I use I do, I do probably do a fair amount of word processing, truth be told. But um, this seems a lot more native to the environment. This seems a lot more responsive. It seems a lot nicer just to use, and it it feels a little more polished. Um, so I think that you know that's consider that a bit of an app pick inside this distro review. Um, it comes with PC Man FMQT edition. I, I like the PC Man FM file manager. Always been a good file manager for me. It's nice to see a QT equivalent. Um, and I think that's about it for this distribution. 
Um, I don't have too much else to say about it, but it's a distribution now. I've been using it for some time on the old laptop, and it's done everything that I wanted it to do. It's done everything that I would expect out of a, an Ubuntu laptop. Um, but I will say this. Um, and that's that it did require a bit more setting up and it is for more advanced users. That's something that, that does need to be said. Uh, you, you are going to need to edit the occasional config file, if, especially if you're running on like an LXQT uh, desktop environment. Um, and you are going to need to know sort of terminology. The install process isn't exactly as smooth as it might be for something like um, Ubuntu or what have you. Hardware-wise, it worked flawlessly. Everything worked perfectly out of the box. Wireless worked fine. Graphics worked fine. It is uh, it is a computer designed to run Linux distributions, so don't take that as too much of an achievement. And uh, to be honest, I think when it comes to the Fedora distributions, I don't think I've ever had a problem with hardware compatibility. I, th I think Fedora distributions have the highest rate of... Um, or, or the fewest amount of hardware issues, with the uh, exception being that they did bring in Wayland a little bit earlier, um, and on things like NVIDIA cards, it, it doesn't play too nice. Um, but other than that, Fedora has always worked well on laptops, and I would possibly caution if you if you do have a NVIDIA card, because a NVIDIA card requires non-free drivers, and then even using a distribution that's so, uh, that so fully and full-throatedly supports free and open-source software, you know, you may be at a little bit of a mismatch, maybe something like Arch or Ubuntu might be more up your street if you are um, very dependent on, um, on, on you know, non-free components of your operating system. But if you, uh, yeah, but uh, when it comes to a free and open source operating system, and if you can use your computer within, you know, only using free and open source software and free and open source codecs, Fedora's, like, it's near the perfect distribution. It's about as close to the most perfect distribution you can get. I have never done a full upgrade on Fedora, but everyone I know who's upgraded to the 26th release has had a perfect upgrade process. So this seems like something that they're quite good at as well at this stage. All in all, I gotta say, I, I do recommend it, and I usually end up recommending Fedora. Even with the RPM Fusion repository, you you get full functionality. It is, it is um, a distribution that you, you are gonna need a bit of knowledge about Linux and software in general to set up so I wouldn't this wouldn't be a distribution that I'd hand off to someone that I you know like a friend or family and say install it yourself I'd need to be be there for that and it does uh, you know the six month upgrade process that's that's quite frequent so you need to, to bear that in mind um, but it, it seems stable like everyone talks about how Fedora uses the cut you know like uses cutting edge, soft, cutting edge software and yes it does but um, but but I have not had a, a serious show stopping bug in my entire use of it, and I used it pretty much from day one. Every upgrade worked, every piece of software worked, every installation process worked, all hardware was detected, and it runs like an absolute dream. So Fedora, I've got to say, this one gets two thumbs up from me. I really like it, and if it fits your particular use case, uh, I'd recommend you guys pick it up and, and had a look. Um, I believe it comes with a live CD, so you can always see if it works on your machine before installing it. Um, but uh, yeah, that's about it from me today. Thank you very much, of course, for watching. If you want to uh, see more of me, I am most active on Mastodon, so I'm Chris Ware at uh, linuxrocks.online. I will, of course, put a link to it in the description, but if I forget, there'll be a link to it on the channel page as well. So uh, that's about it from me today. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.